Hey everybody, it's Monday. This is AMI Day 26, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite scientific instruments, the sling psychrometer. And just a little bit, I'll explain all about the sling psychrometer and how it works. So let's just jump right in. Hope everybody had a great weekend. So humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air. Air's ability to hold water vapor depends on its temperature. Warm air can hold more water vapor than cool air. Relative humidity is the percent of water vapor that is actually in the air compared to the maximum amount of water vapor the air could hold at that temperature. For example, if a sample of air from outside was 10 degrees Celsius and had four grams of water vapor in it, but could hold eight grams of water vapor, then the relative humidity would be 50% because four compared to eight is half. Half is the same as 50%. So this is something we see in the news, especially in the summer, when they tell us about how much or how humid it's going to be that day. They're talking about relative humidity, how much water is in the air compared to how much water could be in the air. The warmer the air, the more water it can hold, which is why we don't get much out of our sweat in the summertime. Relative humidity can be measured with an instrument called a, sling, called a psychrometer, also called the sling psychrometer, because you get to sling it. The psychrometer has two thermometers, a wet bulb and a dry bulb. By, splitting, by spinning the psychrometer in the air and doing some subtraction, the relative humidity can be calculated. Let me take just a second to explain to you guys and show you how the sling psychrometer works. All right, so I just happen to have with me a sling psychrometer, and let's take a little look at how it works. So the science behind the sling psychrometer is the same science behind us sweating when we're hot or spritzing water on ourselves. We do this so that when the water evaporates off of us, turns from the liquid sweat or liquid water that we've splashed on ourselves and becomes a vapor and evaporates away from us, it actually takes heat away. Now, if there's not much moisture in the air, not much humidity, then evaporation works a lot better. More water can evaporate, and that means it can take away more heat and cool us off faster. If there's a lot of moisture already in the air, it's just like here in Arkansas, our humid summer months, we sweat and we sweat and we sweat, but it doesn't really go anywhere because the air already has so much moisture, it can't evaporate. That's how the sling psychrometer works. So if we look at the part that actually does the spinning in our little sling psychrometer, it has two, we call bulbs. These are glass thermometers, okay? So we have this top one. You can see here's the metal end of the thermometer. That's like what you would stick in a liquid or in your mouth if you maybe had a fever. And then we have the bottom one. Okay, notice the bottom one. I know it's not very clear, but it has a little cotton sock on it. Now at the end, we have a reservoir of water. This water comes up the sock and gets that bottom bulb wet. So then the top bulb, we call it the dry bulb, gets the actual air temperature. And then as we spin the sling psychrometer, the wet bulb, the water evaporates and it takes away heat, which changes the temperature in the thermometer. The more it changes, the more air evaporated or more water evaporated, which means there's a low humidity. And so then once we've spun it for a minute or two, we can look at the thermometers and see how big the difference in the temperatures is. The greater the difference, the lower the relative humidity. If the temperatures are really close together, that means the air already has a lot of moisture in it and not much evaporated. All right, in a little more detail, let's uh, read about how to use the sling psychrometer. So, or how to get relative humidity from the sling psychrometer. So first we calculate the difference in temperatures between the wet bulb, that's the one with the little sock on it, and the dry bulb. The dry bulb is the actual air temperature. The wet bulb is how much it changed because of evaporation and slinging the psychrometer. So first we subtract one from the other, see how big the difference between the two temperatures is. Our second step, is we find our value at the top of this table. Okay, so we look here, was our difference in temperature one, our difference in the two temperatures two, difference 
of three, four, or five. Okay, so we find out what that would be. Then we find the dry bulb temperature in the left column, right, our purple in Celsius. And then we find where those two values intersect. Okay, this is our percent relative humidity. How much of the water that could be in the air is actually in the air. So let's do a little example. So let's say it's noon. You're going to need this example for your questions later. Let's say it's new, noon, and the readings on the sling psychrometer are 18 degrees for the dry bulb, that's the actual air temperature, and 14 degrees Celsius for the wet bulb. That's the difference because of evaporation. Okay, so first we subtract, that's part A, 18 minus 14 is 4 degrees Celsius. The dry bulb reading is 8 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we look, we find, here's our difference of 4, here's our temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. We follow this row over to the column for four, and we see that our relative humidity was 64%. So that means that 64% of the water that could be in the air is in the air. We could get 36% more water in the air before the water the air became totally saturated, totally full of water, all it could hold. Okay, remember that warmer air can hold more water. Cooler air can't hold as much water vapor. But you could still have 64% uh, humidity in warm air and 64% humidity in cool air. It'll just be a different amount of water, actual water. All right, let's look at our questions. Question number one, at 5 p.m., remember our example was from noon. Now it's 5 p.m. The psychrometer is used again. The reading on the dry bulb thermometer the actual air temperature is 12 degrees Celsius, and the reading on the wet bulb thermometer is 11 degrees Celsius. What is the new relative humidity? So we follow our steps again. We subtract 12 minus 11, get our difference, right? We look at what the actual air temperature was, 12 degrees Celsius, and then we find our percent using the table. Okay, just go back to steps A through D to find your relative humidity. Question two. How much did the temperature change between noon and the noon example and 5 p.m.? So go back to the example. Remember that the actual air temperature is the dry bulb. And look at our new dry bulb temperature. And let's see how much the temperature changed. Again, we'll need some subtraction. Step three. How much did the relative humidity change during the same period? Okay, so now we're not looking at dry bulb or wet bulb. We're actually looking at the percent relative humidity. How much did that change? Subtraction once more. And then our last question, how was the relative humidity affected by air temperature in this comparison? Justify your answer with evidence from the text. Okay, so let's look at how the humidity changed and how the temperature changed. Okay, as the temperature changed, what did that cause the humidity to change? Or how did that cause the humidity to change? Why did it do that? And let's go back to our two paragraphs up here, especially this first paragraph, to get our evidence. I won't give away too much. All right, guys, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope this was helpful. Love to hear uh, if it is.